This week, we have the story of Jonah. Really, it's just a few verses out of Jonah. It's like verses 1 through 5, and then it skips to 10 of chapter 3, which um, Jonah only has four chapters, so it's really close to the end here. And I'm just going to go ahead and read 1 through 10 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, 1 through 10 uh, of the story of Jonah, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty more days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We, I think, uh, most of us know the story of Jonah. It is um, a story that we tell our kids. Uh, we have um, children's books about uh, Jonah, they sort of end differently, some of them, and, uh, but the main story is, is, is there and uh, is pretty known by a lot of people, uh, even outside of Christian circles. It's, you know, it's Jonah is called to go and proclaim to um, the Ninevites uh, that they need to repent, and he does not want to do that. Uh, so he's supposed to go east, and he runs west of the coast, Joppa. He gets on a boat, trying to sail to the furthest ends of the world, away from this call to go talk to the Ninevites. And uh, while he's there, he's asleep, and a storm brews up, and the sailors are like, what is going on? He goes, I know what's going on. I'm running. So the sailors say, you know, what should we do? And he actually tells them to throw him overboard. Uh, they don't want to, so they throw everything else out. Um, and then, but then eventually they say, okay, uh, but your death is not on us, is really what they kind of say. <laughs> so they throw him uh, off the boat, and uh, he's swallowed by a whale. He's taken down into the depths of the earth where he prays to God uh, while he's in the fish, and he repents. Um, and then he is spewed up on the shore. And we pick the story up right here where I just started reading. Where now God, for a second time, says, go to Nineveh. And he does. And uh, I imagine for a preacher uh, of Jonah's uh, prophetic wisdom, this is the, uh, a very good response uh, from a people if you're telling them, look, you guys need to repent. Uh, you get the best of, of response. In fact, the king himself says, 
not just human beings will repent, but animals, like all of creation says a collective we're sorry. And in that moment, you get this concept of God saying God sorry. A word there uh, for God changing his mind or God relenting or turning from the destruction. Uh, is a is a very similar word to repent. In fact, it means to kind of say sorry, to have compassion on people and say sorry. Um, and sure enough, this is what happens. And uh, I love that in the Old Testament, sometimes God is going to do one thing, and in response to humans, in response to creation, God does another thing. For me, it doesn't. It doesn't bother me that God changes in this way because it just shows how directly involved and relational and intimate God is with God's creation. That God can genuinely be surprised by what we do and then move and pivot with us. And it shows a real kind of relationship. And that's precisely what happens here. Uh, the Ninevites repent, they sit in ashes, they fast, and, it's, and the, the king even says, who knows, <laughs> maybe God will change his mind. And sure enough, God changes his mind. Um, there is something about that. There is something about God responding to us in a way that looks like change that is change that I find so comforting. I think I grew up in a tradition where God does not change. God is the same always. And in a way, I think there is some truth to that, that God is always love or that God is always, you know, moving towards us. But in another way, <clears throat> God very much reacts to what we do. God very much is involved in uh, turning or uh, being surprised by uh, what we do as creation. And that really just shows God's intimate relationship with creation. The story ends uh, in chapter 4 uh, with Jonah being very upset that he had to go to the Ninevites. <laughs> and in fact, I think there, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, there is an allusion to uh, Moses uh, coming down for a second time with the stone tablets. And uh, the, the Hebrew phrase there is that God is steadfast love. Um, and Jonah kind of refers to it and says something along the lines of, uh, you're, just too, um, you're just too full of steadfast love. That because God does not change in God's love, God can change in other ways to react and to be in relationship with you and I. That's what I like about this, is that God is unchanging, steadfast compassion and love. And so God can change his mind when he is in such a loving relationship with a creation that oftentimes can surprise God. So maybe from this passage, we take comfort that God uh, is willing to work with us. And there's something about that that um, I find more comforting than the unchanging God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.